Yes, uh, you took the words right out of my mouth there. An absolute roller coaster with us. Six games <laughs> to cover. Derek Sorry. Copenhagen. Two oh, one yes. Copenhagen. Yes. <laughs> Fuck again. <laughs> Get it right up, you Andy Walker. Oh, fucking brilliant. So they need two two goals in fucking two goals. five minutes. Yes. Oh, superb. All right. Sorry, mate. All right. Why don't you start this again now? <laughs> Hi everyone and welcome to the next episode of the I Ready Podcast. With me is my co-host... Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Two week, three weeks now. You're I can't get, do it. You're, get, you're getting too excited, mate, with your, oh, with your funny line that you were oh, going to do there. Right, start again. Hi everyone and welcome to the next episode of the I Ready Podcast. As ever, I'm your co-host... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Not again. Not again. I can't contain myself here, this is funny. No, I can't, yeah, it's fucking right. hilarious, sorry right. mate. We'll, we'll go again. Games, <coughs> Excuse me. I chew. He got the ball, I can't remember who it was to, maybe Jack or somebody like that. Um, that would be hard because he wasn't playing. That's correct, I. Yeah. And the stadium erupts in red, white and blue, you've never seen anything like it. Let's go. Hi everyone and welcome to the next episode of the I Ready Podcast. As ever, I'm your host Derek and with me is my co-host Dave. How are you doing Dave? <laughs> I'm very well Derek, how are you mate? I'm even better because we're the only Scottish team left in Europe now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was our fifth attempt to try and get this podcast started. Yes, god damn what you Copenhagen for scoring. Uh, I know, I know, yes, Derek, I'm very well and even better now after uh, Copenhagen just scoring the second goal uh, at the Piggery just uh, a few few minutes ago, so uh, 3-1 Copenhagen! <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is fucking hilarious! 3-1, oh Andy Walker is as sick as a fucking parrot to get it right to his. Oh, oh that is fucking hilarious. Fucking brilliant. Oh, my God. We'll get this started yet, properly. Oh, my God, this is fucking hilarious. Right, contain yourself, Derek. Yes, um, sorry, the, the, the Copenhagen just threw us completely there. <laughs> I thought they were bothered about them too much, but yes, we're here to talk about Rangers. You know, a mixed bag, and you've taken the words out of my mouth earlier on, it was a roller coaster, isn't it, Dave? It certainly is, Derek. We're, 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 we're down in the dumps, and then we're, you know, the ju- ju- jubilation is just incredible, and... It's just I, I, don't, I don't know which way we're going, Derek. To be perfectly honest with you, but at this moment in time, we are on the crest of a wave uh, just now, uh, and we've just got to really hope and pray that it stays like that, don't we? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, what a result last night. We'll get into it, obviously, but we've got five games to cover oh here. Oh my so, goodness! Yes, a lot, a lot to talk about. So we yeah. better just go rattling and go down the tunnel and onto the pitch. <laughs> Right, so the first game we've got to cover, rather unfortunately, is on the game on Wednesday the 12th of February. It was a 2-1 loss away to Kilmarnock. We lined up McGregor, Tavernier, Goldson, Katic, Halliday, Jack, Arfield, Aribo, Hadji, Kent and Morelos. On the subs bench we had Fotheringham, Flanagan, Edmondson, Davis, Jones, Stewart and Camberry. Where do we start with this, Dave? Oh... <sighs> I honestly don't know, Derek. I'm, I'm actually waiting to see to, to hear what you've got to say about the game first before I pitch in. Well, I'll get into the the meat and bones of the game. In the sixth minute, there was some good tight passing going forward on the right end, and then Morelos having a 25 yard shot off target it was a miss hit and ended up being a trundler. 13th minute, Tavernier down the right, plays a good ball into the middle of the box. Morelos got his head onto it. It was on target, but a no power and right at the keeper. 23rd minute, ball on the left, deep in the killy half. Halliday, who passed it to the middle to Hadjian with a quick first-time pass right into the box for Ebo, who shoots just wide. Unlucky, and it was outstanding vision and pass by Hadji there. 
26 minute, it was a corner from Kelly right to the edge of the box in the centre and the attacker balloons with his shot over the bar. 29th minute, Hadji with a snapshot but it was under pressure and well wide. 31st minute, lovely quick move down the, down the left, starting from defence. Passed into the middle to Aribo who has a lovely touch to beat his marker. Passes to the left to Kent, fed the ball to Morelis in the box and a great last ditch sliding tackle by the defender to take the ball away from Morelis and put it out for the corner. And then from there, on the 31st minute, we went 1-0 up with Arfield. An absolute stunner. The corner was played short, worked to the middle, passed to Arfield, and from 25 yards has a stunning strike, bending the ball to the right side and back into the back of the net. The keeper had absolutely no chance. Yep, absolutely tremendous goal, Derek. As you say, hit it first time. He knew exactly what he was doing, but the, the dip and the swerve on it as well. Keeper, absolutely no way he was saving that. And an absolutely fantastic goal he put us 1-0 up. Absolutely. 34th minute, Ab- Aribo robs the defender of the ball on the left near the goal line, crosses in, defender clears only, but only to Arfield, who has a first-time volley at the edge of the box and just wide. And then, moment of controversy, 38th minute, corner from Kelly, a clear dive in the box by their captain Dicker, who was already on a yellow. If the Alfredo Morelos one in the old firm yep. game it was deemed to have dived, then this was the exact same. There was the only difference is the last one where um, the the defender for Celtic cut across Morelos and it looked actually more of a fill than this one. But this was yep, a clear definitely. dive mm-hmm. and nothing mm-hmm. given. Diabolical no, refereeing. I double standards again, Derek. But as I say, we we seem to spend our time going on about this all the time. But as you say. As, as clear a dive as you'll see, you, it really was. It was. It was actually quite laughable how bad it was. Yeah, but we'll rack them up here because we've got a lot to talk about in terms of referees in the next few games anyway. 43rd minute, Kent fouled by Power. Both fell down. Power prevented Kent from getting up. Kent tries to get up. Power reacts. Halliday comes steaming in, and then the ref books Power and Kent. For absolutely <laughs> baffling Kent had done absolutely <coughs> nothing wrong and all that and if somebody was going to get a yellow card it probably should have been Halliday in power not Kent in power just yep. a, a complete bottle job by the referee mm-hmm. once again and half time came fairly, got to be fairly content with that being 1-0 yes yep I certainly was Derek because I thought that you know for, for most of it we controlled the game we certainly deserved to be winning it was a great goal and, you know, you, you would like to think that we'd be saying to ourselves, right, that's us 1-0 up. Try and just, no even so much put play, play on the break, but just try and control the second half. You know, let them try and, and come at us and, you know, just make sure that we're completely watertight at the back. That's, you know, really all we were looking for. Yeah, absolutely. So at half time, fiftieth uh, minute, outstanding ball from Morelos who was tight on the touchline on the right side as he was going forward, played right to the centre on the edge of the box, looking for Kent who was just nudged by the backtrack and Burke. No attempt to play the ball whatsoever. By the letter of the law, that's a foul and a red yep. card. Mm-hmm. Definitely. And, and I think he was already on a yellow as well at that point, if mm-hmm. I remember yep. right. But you know, once again, two decisions by referees which are game changing decisions. Yep, definitely. 51st minute, great shot from Morelos with his left foot after a great hold-up play by Aribo going goal-bound, but the keeper had a great dive and save to get the ball. 56th minute, great play from Morelos on the right, great skill to get through, two defenders and into the box. It was a slight hand on his shoulder and Morelos goes down easy. Absolutely daft to do it from Morelos once again. And could this be the reason why when Morelos does dive now, well, hold our hands up here because Morelos is fucking pathetic at diving. <coughs> but when he does get fouled, he doesn't get that rub of the green because it's almost like the boy that cried wolf. It's uh, we all know that he's that, that, that he's getting watched, Derek, and we all know that he's not going to get away with anything whatsoever, anything. So, I think it's you know he should be saying to say, "Look, there's no even any point in trying to do anything like that because I'm not going to get anything, and if anything, I'm going to get myself any bother." And you know that's that's exactly what happened. Yep. 60th minute, lovely long ball down the right by Tavernier to Morelos. Morelos tries to lob the keeper from the edge of the box with a first time volley. Uh, it takes an age to come down and ends up hitting the top of the bar and out. Very unlucky there from him there, but good vision. 64th minute, Hadji with a shot very similar to the goal score that he scored against Hibs, but took a bobble just before he shot and that was a trundle on save by the keeper. 69th minute, Kelly on the right side near the goal line, held the ball up, had a shot at a tight angle. McGregor had to dive to get to it, fairly comfortable though. 73rd minute, a lot of pressure uh, in and around the Kelly box, but couldn't get a shot off cleanly. 
And then all all our good work had been undone on the 76th minute where Kelly drew level. Ball crossed in from the right, deflected off the Kelly player in the box, falls right to their attacker who tries a shot from outside of the box. He completely mishit the ball, falls right into the path of their attacker who was unmarked in the box, and that's a shot past McGregor. Certainly handball when it was oh. crossed in as well. <coughs> Derek, that's what I was absolutely enraged about because the ball, I mean, it was as clear a handball as you can get. He even he used the party's arm to get control of the ball, which was quite incredible. So for the fact that that was the stopped right then and there, you know, I, I was going absolutely daft. So I dread to think what the players were doing as well. But clear as day, that gay goal should not have stood. Yeah, absolutely not. There's three game-changing decisions yep. by referees yep. and linesmen. But Taking the handball out of it, we should have done a lot better to defend that as well. But just a, a bit of fortune as well with the fact that their player completely mishit it and it fell one of the, it fell right to one of their players. And I can kind of see why that player wasn't marked. If you know, it certainly wasn't part of play and it went well wide as well. But we should have been doing better defensively. 82nd minute, Hadji off and Stewart on 82nd minute as well, Kelly player clearly holds back Tavernier and prevents him getting forward no yellow card again, much like the, the one that happened with um, Darren McGregor in the Hibs game as well wasn't yeah. quite as a, a wrestling match as the one against Morelos, but again no yellow card given for a clear hold back yep. 84th minute, Morelos spins in the box with the ball, clearly pushed no foul, surely uh, should have been another yellow card for a dive if, if that wasn't a foul then, or it should have been a penalty Yep. 85th minute, Aribo off, Camberry on. 85th minute, cross into the box, Morelos gets his head to it and it went into the back of the net, ruled as a foul he put it because he put his arm slightly on the defender. An absolute joke of the decision. So if that one there was ruled a foul, then the previous one that we are Morelos got a booking for was certainly not a foul then. Yep. Exactly, yeah. So it's it's you can't have it either way. Uh, it's a ludicrous decision as well. Um, so there's I think five game change decisions by the referee in this game. Yep. Five. Yep. Quite incredible. And the, and then we've seen it coming because this was just typical of us. 88th minute, Kelly went two one up. There's a long ball launched up by their keeper. One header to knock it over the head of Goldson, and I think Katic was involved as well. The attacker nips in and puts it into the back of the net. Just a. a shocking goal to lose so simple and how many times are we going to be undone by this long ball knocked up over the defence it was shambolic defending Derek let's be honest with you I was still absolutely raging for the fact that we you know we were that we weren't winning the game you know with the you know the Morelos chance uh, and the you, you know their goal I was more I was still raging about that to be perfectly honest with you and it was as if it was it was like a surreal feeling because I'd been watching it and when they scored the second goal I honestly couldn't quite believe that you know that was us getting beat I was completely in shock and it was shocking defending Derek. It was. I'll, I'll, I'll agree with you one hundred percent. Really bad. But we should never. We, we should never have been in that position. We should have been winning that match. At, you know, by at least one goal anyway. At that point, if it wasn't for absolutely shocking decisions against us, I, I was more annoyed about that than anything else. Yeah, uh, absolutely. But. You know, it's one of these things where this league is being lost because of our own undoing like that and um, we'll get into the next couple of games as well, won't we? But there was a bit of fallout from, from this game as well. Um, Morelos was again subject to racist abuse and racist comments. Um, fair play to Kelly are investigating the, the comments. A video went around social media at the time and it was certainly clear as day what was said. Yep. And as I said, well done to Kelly for dealing with it professionally, unlike Celtic with the, the Morelos issue. Of note... On the Morelis issue at the Old Firm game, the 12-year-old boy who was charged for the racist comments against Morelis, as expected, has been referred to the children's panel. And what's more hilarious about it is the fact that Ofcom kicked out Celtic's complaint to them, uh, complaint to them about Sky's interview with Morelis as well. Um, basically, they stated that because it was done through Sky's um, website and their on-demand channels, there's no case to answer. Not that there was any case to answer anyway. The no. apology was given, and you know it should have been accepted. Celtic Celtic yep. just made out. Celtic made out to be they're the victims once again. Yep, play the victim card, Derek. But again, uh, you know that's a that's another story with them, isn't it? 
Well, we'll certainly get into that later on in yep. the podcast, yeah. Um, but anyway, we had to regroup and we then kicked off on Sunday the 16th of February. It was a 1-0 home win against Livingston. Now, that had been postponed from the previous day due to a waterlogged pitch because the storms we were having. Um, so it was meant to be on the Saturday. It was moved to the Sunday, kind of inexplicably. Um, Livingston retweeted that it was an SPFL decision to play the next day. Both clubs wanted it to be on the Monday. Derek, I, as you know, was absolutely raging because I had actually got and won tickets, believe it or not, to go. And my son and I set off on the Saturday and uh, got as far as Glasgow Royal, only for my wife to phone me to tell us to about turn. But to be fair, the weather when we travelled through was absolutely horrendous on, on, on the motorway, but absolutely raging because I couldn't go on the Sunday at all. So I had to give up my tickets altogether. So it wasn't a very good day for me either. Certainly not. Um... No. So, there was one change to this game. We lined up McGregor, Tavernier, Goldson, Katic, Halliday, Arfield, Davis, Jack, Adjay, Morelis and Kent. On the subs bench, we had Fotheringham, Flanagan, Aribo, Kamara, Jones and Cam- Camberry and Stewart. Um, so, first half, really not a lot happened. In the 15th minute, Hadji had a shot from distance on the ground, well wide of the right post. 17th minute, it was a quick break down the left with Kent. Cuts inside, hits a curling shot but wide. 34th minute, great cut and move with Davis going forward through the middle a 1-2 with Morelis Davis gets the ball to Halliday in the middle of the box so it's a flick shot and the keeper pulls off a brilliant save to knock it into the post and wide uh, best move of the game so far yep. at that point on the 34th minute. Um, 40th minute, fantastic break down the right with Morelis playing an outstanding long cross ball in front of the defence which finds Hadji who passes to the overlapping Davis on the right, got into the box and had a shot but another good save by the keeper by narrowing the angle and blocking yep. the shot putting out for the corner. 42nd minute, absolutely shocking lunge on Goldson where the attacker caught him clean with the face of his studs. A yellow card given, it should have been a red clear as day. The linesman was about five feet from it and that was much the same same as a challenge uh, Aberdeen player done against Ayer. Um, I think it was Cosgrove, was it not? And against Celtic. So just a shocking, shocking challenge and should have yep. been a red. So again, another referee decision. Yeah. So into half time, we were looking for some sort of comeback from Spark. the basket. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it never really happened. Uh, 52nd minute, good break with one touch, he's getting the ball forward, ending Morelos shanking the ball wide. Poor, and it was really a poor effort and lack composure. 54th minute, Kent with a shot in the box, but right at the keeper. 55th minute, Kent came off and Camberry came on, and he kind of changed the game there, yeah, didn't he? Yeah, he did, yep, definitely, yep. 56th minute, long throw into the box, initial wave of attackers missed it with the head, bounces right in front of the Livingston player, right in the middle of the box. Uh, the Livingston attacker jumps with a half volley and gets a, gets a shot off and a great close range save from McGregor. Uh, very dangerous there. Yeah. However, in the 58th minute, Arfield scored and made it 1-0. Lots of possession getting the ball forward, passed high to Hadji, who is near the halfway line. On the spot, he controls it with one touch, looks up, plays an amazing long ball to Arfield in space on the right near the box, who takes a touch to knock it forward a yard, and then with his second touch, shoots it past the keeper. A great all-round goal, and that was just ultimately right from Hadji. You know, didn't even have to move an inch to, to get the ball and just play, play it an amazing pass. He seems to know, Derek, where his attacking players are. He, even if he's got his back to goal, he, he seems to know what players are making runs and where. And he's that is, you know, pr- probably his best asset, I think, as he's through balls. You know, the way that he can just p- pick out players, absolutely tremendous. Yep, absolutely brilliant. 65th minute, Halliday going forward gets nudged off the ball. There was correctly no foul given. But his momentum takes him over the electronic advertising and as he's fallen, his head appears to strike a stool and causes a big gash in his head. He looked out of it for a, a good minute, didn't he? No, oh, it, was, it was a bad one, Derek. I mean, I actually thought for a second that he would be, you know, that that would be him, you know, out from there. But uh, as, as, as you say, he, he certainly did look as if he was, you know, slightly dazed, didn't he? Yeah, but... A couple of minutes later, he was back on with the head bandages. Something about yep. a Rangers player in a head bandage, isn't it? <laughs> the only thing he could have done is be Croatian. And, you know, maybe, <laughs> exactly. with, maybe, maybe the head knock he was. So. Yeah, exactly. 69th minute, good play, working the ball from right to the centre, ending in Jack trying a placed shot from the edge of the box but goes wide. 70th minute, Morelis has the ball in the back of the net but ruled offside. Ball was fed to Camberry who has a great first touch to take it forward. Morelis nips in and effectively steals it off him, shoots in the back of the net. 
as usual, RTV replays were absolutely dire, but uh, it was still seen by Andrew Dixon on Twitter and clearly showed that it was onside. So once again, Morelos getting a goal ruled off and it clearly was should have yep. stood. And these things, Derek, he's needing a goal just now. He's, he, his confidence is, uh, you, you can tell that his confidence is low and that's been two goals that have been taken away from him. Two goals that could, you know, completely change you know, his game for us, but he's uh, he's just not getting any, any, any luck at all just now, is he? No, um, it's just, I don't know what it is with him. We'll, we'll obviously get a wee bit more into it when yep. the next coming games, but there's something up with him just now. I know there was apparently contract talks getting opened up with him. I don't know if he's in the huff with something. I don't know if he what, but everything that he says in the media seems to be that, you know, he's all happy here, but mm-hmm. there's obviously a lot of off-field issues to now in terms of his personal life, in terms of, you know, the abuse he's getting as well. Um, and there's a lot of focus on him. That might be taking a, a big toll on him. So, yeah. you know, you've got to remember it would be tough for any one of us and we're, you know, in our 30s and 40s. He's still, you know, in his early 20s. So, yeah. It's got to be a lot for him. Yep, definitely. Um, 81st minute, Livingston out of nothing get the ball forward. The attacker has a volley at the edge of the box and pings off the post and back out and cleared to, to be cleared for the corner. That should have been a goal. It was very dangerous and kept us on our toes because we're only 1-0 at this stage Yeah, as well. exactly, yep. 82nd minute, Hadji off, Stewart on. 85th minute, corner from the left. Goldson gets his head to it, but it was cleared over the bar. 85th minute, quick break by Livingston, ending a shot just inside the box, but right at McGregor. And in the 87th minute, Camberry had the ball into the back of the net, but it was ruled offside. It, it was a long kick up field by McGregor. Morelis ends up picking up the ball, took it forward. Lovely ball played to the left for the on running Camberry, who shoots it into the back of the net. Again, RTV replays very poor. I don't they need to get that sorted. But Andrew Dixon put up a still as again and it did look unfortunately just about half foot off. Yeah. Yeah. And then full time. So not the greatest of performances, but a win's a win. It maybe masks what was to come. You've got to take the three points. Yeah, you do. If we had have been like absolutely, you know, free flowing football and bombarding the Livingston goal and, you know, completely controlling the game and playing absolutely out, out of this world, you would say, oh, we were just unlucky. But as you say, we, we just had this horrible feeling that we were masking something, didn't we? It wasn't the complete game and performances for players that we were looking for, was it? But, you know, we were happy with the three points, but very nervy. I think, yeah, we've got to just look at it as that we got the three points. Um, yeah. Sometimes you've got to win ugly. We've said that all season. It's unfortunately been once too often in the league so far this year, and as we'll get to in the, the St. Johnson game yep. in a couple of games' time, that, that, that doesn't always work yep. out for you. But anyway, next game we've got to cover here is Thursday the 20th of February and just an incredible night. Yep. A 3-2 win at home against SC Braga in the Europa League last 32. Uh, I, I'm just... I still can't get over what's happened and we'll get into obviously last night's game yeah. as well, but we'll go down probably as one of the best nights we've, we've had in Europe. Yeah, of ab- absolutely incredible, Derek. From from going from utter de- de- dejection to being completely over the moon uh, with everything that happened, I'll let you get in, get into the game, Derek. We'll relive it, but what an absolutely incredible game! Yeah, so we ended up making two changes in this game. We lined up McGregor, Tavernier, Goldson, Katic, Barisic, Arfield, Davis, Kamara, Hadji, Morelis, and Kent. On the subs bench, we had Fodderham, Halliday, Edmondson, Aribo, Barker, Stewart, and Camberry. On the third minute, it was a free kick from Braga on the left side, floated into the box, a free header forcing McGregor to make a great save, knocked out to their attacker at the back post to try to shoot, but hits the side net, and so really dangerous yep, straight, straight off the away. mark there. Straight away, yep. Um, my feed went down for about 15 minutes. I, I could only keep up to date on Twitter, and by the sound of it, we were getting a bit of a pound yes, in. Yes, we, we were, Derek. And they did score their goal on the 11th minute. So I managed to see the goal back. We were passing about in midfield. Kamara, a really, really lazy pass backwards and loses the ball. Bragg, a quick pass and lazy half-hearted attempts to get the ball back. As if we weren't want to put a, t- a challenge in. 
their attacker unleashes a 30 yard stunning shot into the top right corner yep. and uh, that was that was that I mean can't take away from the shot we should have done a lot better defending it but for me and my, my mates have, have shouted me down in this one for me I felt McGregor was maybe a wee bit too far off his line and out of position but again it was a, a an absolute brammer of a shot. I'm not going to blame McGregor for it, Derek. What annoyed me the most about it was we were not making it difficult for Braga at that point. And by that, I mean we were basically passing the ball to them or giving the ball away very easily or misplacing passes. And we were the masters of our own downfall at this point in the game. Uh, and that's what annoyed me the most. The goal was absolutely stunning, but they should never have been in that position in the first place to get the goal. And it was all down to sloppy, sloppy play, and it had been coming because we just couldn't get a grip. We were panicking completely, and it just it was it was looking at that stage, Derek, like it was going to be a bit of an annihilation. Yeah, um, certainly from what I was hearing anyway, and wasn't sounding good. And we we knew Braga were going to pose a big threat, the top goal scorers in the competition as well yep. at that point. So, um, but my feed went back on round about twenty two thirty. On the 24th minute, lovely th- ball fed through to Morelos, who was in space by Hadji, beat the offside, goes towards goal on the right of the box. Uh, the defender was catching up. Morelos had a shot, but it was right at the keeper. The yeah. keeper didn't even narrow the angle that much as well, so it's kind of poor by Morelos, I would have yeah. said. Yeah, great, great chance, Derek. And at that stage, it was kind of a ball out, out of nothing. So, But at that stage, I was saying to myself, well, you know, we uh, are not in this game, but we're still... You know, that's a chance that we've had there. So it was slightly encouraging, even although Braga had the you know the, the bulk of possession uh, and all of the chances, it was maybe just a wee sort of glimmer of hope at that stage, just the fact that we were able to get through. Yeah. Twenty ninth minute, long switch from right to left to find Morelos in the box. Switches feet has a shot, but right out of the keeper who saves yep. with his feet and pull, puts out for the corner. Thirty seventh minute, defence splitting pass right through our defence. Attacker was running in, but fortunately McGregor was aware of it and well off his line to meet the ball and cleared yep. at the edge of the box. Thirty ninth minute, Braga down the right, got the ball into the box, switched feet and hit a shot through their defence at an angle, but it was just by the post. So Really, into half time, it was a great game for the neutral, but we were being largely outplayed. Braga were more hungry than us, they were yeah. knocking the ball a bit well, uh, playing quickly and playing with a very high line, which is quite surprising for an away team. Um, they were winning the midfield battles, um, and many of our players were posted missing. Too many stray passes for me, yeah, losing the definitely. ball cheap, yep. losing mm-hmm. the ball cheaply. They've been dangerous on attack and unlucky on occasion. We've shown again what we can do uh, with that 10 minute spell with, with Morelos, two chances as well and it caused them issues so that was the way to play it they were playing a very high line which is a very dangerous game to play if your offside trap gets beat then you know we're through and goal or the opposition's through and goal um, Morelos as well picked up a needless yellow card for remonstrating with the referee which ruled him out of the, the second leg absolute stupidity from Morelos because it was a nothing challenge as well there was nothing really in it that never went for him and he just spat the dummy yes it was I was feeling I think it was just more frustration than anything else Derek because as you say there was nothing happening for him I do find it hard to, to, to try and be, be, be negative about Morelos I know that because uh, you know I do think he's he's fantastic but he was having a it was, he was having another t- torrid night. He was having the chances, and there was nothing, you know, there was nothing c- coming off for him, Derek. So I'll put it down to frustration more than anything else, just to try and give him the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, but I mean, it's these things that cost us, though. And yeah. Do you know something? The, the overriding feeling on social media was the fact that I'm actually quite glad he's missing for the second leg. Because he maybe needs a wee bit of a spell on the sideline just to well, regroup, calm down. And, you know, well, as we've seen Phil last night, we've done well yeah, without him. So. Yeah. But into half time, anyway, we needed something, some sort of spark. Well, we'll get into it. But in the yeah. 46, 46 minute, there's ball up in the air in midfield. Kamara heads the ball backwards, but right into the path of the attacker, who was free in space. Fortunately, he had a heavy touch, and McGregor was able to clear it, but it was more or less one on one with McGregor there. A glaring opportunity for Braga. Had yeah. that went in, then that would have been curtains, I think, from there. But 46 minute as well, just after that, right up the park, down the right hand side, Morelos puts in what I assume was a cross, and the swerve of it takes the ball towards goal, and it goes just wide. 
51st minute, ball played down the right out from our defence. We lose out, attacker picks up the ball, drives it forward and has a shot from 20 yards and off the bar. Again, another close one for us. And then the right decision, and you'd seen it from about the 50th minute, a sub was getting readied and the only option he could have done was take Kamara off because he was atrocious and Aribo came on for him. Just after that, down the left, we were down the left hand side. Ended the Morelos having a shot, but deflected off the, the defender's leg and safely into the arms of the keeper. Fifty fifth minute, Morelos on the right plays Hadji in, who was overlapping. Morelos drifts to the centre of the box. Hadji puts in a great cross, bounces in front of Morelos and off his foot. Keeper gets his hand to it, but spills, going goal bound, and then cleared off the line by the defender. Keeper got another touch to put put Morelos off as well. I think um, there was a, a VAR replay as well, just to make sure it never went over the line. Yeah. Never so, um, just that was one of these occasions the ball just wouldn't sit right for for Morelis there. So I'm quite unlucky there. And then on the 59th minute, two 0 down. Braga had a throw in at the dugouts. Three quick passes to get it to their attacker who drove the ball towards the right. And at the edge of the box, he shoots to the left into the back of the net. Uh, great goal. I don't think it was a throw throw in in the first place. No, mind you. definitely not. No, um, that that, was, and that was another thing. That was what I was raging about as well it was quite clear I was watching it again with my son and he was going absolutely daft as well saying you know that's definitely your throw in and they've, they've got that wrong and then they scored from it so it's, it's, it's another one that really shouldn't have stood Derek oh, um, so just as you know it's not just Scottish referees because cause certainly the referee were giving random decisions random throw ins to them when it clearly wasn't their ball but you know 2-0 down we should have done better in defence and apparently that was that um, boy's first goal for the club as well um, yeah. from there did Braga switch off a wee bit perhaps <laughs> but we turned into another team from that moment on we were just like a team possessed yep. and we got a goal in the 66 minute really kind of <sighs> just stunning um, Hadji scored the goal to make it 2-1 the ball played out to Hadji on the right of the box switches to his left foot and then hits a belter of a shot threading it through the defence into the bottom right corner kind of out of nothing even though we started to play better we didn't get any opportunities apart from that one there but how he got that through that, that the, the two defenders there is beyond me and there's where it started the Hadji goal Derek absolutely sensational the control the, you know his touch to take it away and then that shot the accuracy and the power that he got on that to get it down you know right down in the very bottom corner past the goalkeeper it was an absolutely sensational goal it really was and I, you know sometimes when you get a goal of such high quality like that it totally spurs the team on it certainly did with the crowd as well the crowd had a huge part to play in this Derek and you know for, as, as you say for, for there on there was no way that we were going to be getting beat in, in that game but after that we, we just completely t- turned it around after that and it was all down to that fantastic goal absolutely tremendous Yep, 68th minute Kent off and Camberry on 73rd minute Barisic he came off injured he got a I think it was a bit of a kidney punch wasn't it mm-hmm. yep. and Stewart came on for him and then in a moment of just absolute brilliance Aribo made it two each an outstanding indiv- individual goal I never picked this up at the time but he actually started it himself on the yep. wide left I, c- I can't remember who he got the ball to but he passed it in- into midfield and then he got the ball back he c- picks the ball up again from 25 yards from goal, takes the ball through a tightly packed defence, I think he skipped past about 4 or 5 defenders dinks to the left, takes it around the last defender and shoots into the back of net that was just magical that it was Absolutely sensational, Derek. Uh, he got the ball. It was basically, I think he was ju- ju- just inside his own half, and it was a sort of, sort of heavy weighted pass that he didn't really control, but he managed to sort of slide in to you know to get the ball played in. I think it was maybe Arfield, and then he, you know it was the one-two, and he basically ju- just kept going. I think he took four players out in one move, Derek. He sort of shuffled to his right, he leant to his left and took the ball, curled it past one, skipped past the next player, rounded the next player into the goal and then his, his finish past the goalkeeper was absolutely fantastic. It was tremendous. What a goal. With two absolutely stunning goals. Couldn't quite believe it, uh, you know, for us to get back to 2-2. It was. It was just. It was just. I don't think anybody in the stadium could could believe it, considering how down and out we were. Absolutely sensational. 
and for a change, I wasn't obviously we couldn't watch it on our TV as well, um, because of the the rights and all that. So it was picked up by BT, I think it was, yep. and so they've got proper uh, microphones around the stadium, and the atmosphere was incredible. Yep. Absolutely incredible, Derek. It really was. Uh, as soon as I watched it, it, it reminded me instantly of a game years and years ago when we were getting beat 2-0 by Marseille uh, in the Champions League and we brought it back to 2-2. But, you know, as you're about to get into it, we, we, we went one better and we actually we, we went on incredibly and won the game. Yep. 78th minute, ball played from the left into the right, into the Braga box. Out to Camberry on the left, who hits a shot, but it hits the side net. And, and then, as you said... On the 81st minute, we went 3-2 with Hadji scoring. Well, technically Hadji scored anyway. <laughs> it was a free kick from the centre from about 27 yards. He went to take the free kick and then the ball moved with the wind. So, obviously, he had to stop and then retake it. And I don't know if that spooked the defence out or anything like that. But he hits it, retakes it, hits the shot, hits off the back of the defender in the wall, spins up and into the top left corner. A bit of fortune, but we'll take it every single day of the week, and the place erupted. Unbelievable. It was one of those surreal moments, Derek, wasn't it? You could just sense that something was going to happen. Uh, and there's that old saying that, you know, when you say, I wouldn't care how we scored, it could go in off somebody's backside or anything like that. But their goalkeeper, who had been absolutely sensational all night, uh, and it took two goals at absolute, you know, sheer, you know, world class goals to get past them. Yeah, you know, it was going to have to be a goal like that or like a deflection like that. We really weren't the cairn, Derek, were we? It took the free kick, uh, you know, as you say, the ball moved, it took the deflection, it ended up in the back of the net. There was nobody giving two shits how that ball ended up in the back of the net. And Braga were completely shell shocked, weren't they? They could not believe what had happened after so long in the game that they had controlled it and then we just blitzed them in the last 25 minutes. It was absolutely incredible. I don't think we'll see a game like that for many, many a year, Derek. You know, that comeback is just absolutely incredible. I keep saying it. It was, it was fantastic. It, it really was. And got every, it gave everybody a, a, a lift. The, the fans, you know, the players, everything. It was just, it was fantastic. It really was. I mean, you're talking about the 11 players of Braga couldn't believe it happened. The 50,000 fans couldn't believe it happened, you yep. know, in the stadium. Everybody watching could not believe that happened. Yep. It was just a, a memorable night. As I said at the start, this will go down as probably the be one of the best yep. um, results and the best, uh, you can't call it performances in some respects, but the, the best moments of European football yeah. we've seen in a Rangers team. Just yep. incredible. Um, 83rd minute, Goldson with an amazing tackle in the box to take the ball off the attacker at the last minute, it was just absolutely brilliant from Goldson there, and that's how the game ended up just absolutely um, <laughs> we're kind of lost for words and you kind of still are talking about it but um, just something that you know, uh, is something special disappointing to, to lose the two away goals, but you know set oh, us up and put us in there Derek, with, so. with you know 27 minutes to go we would have bitten somebody's arm off just to be drawn level at that point because of, you know, how the game was going. But for us to be 3-2 up was just incredible. Absolutely fantastic. And giving us something to go into the second leg with, which we just didn't see that one coming at all at one stage. So And I'm not you know, sure if you I'm not sure if you've seen the stats with us and I was amazed by this. Despite us being so bad for the first sixty minutes the shots on target for Braga were four. The shots on target for Rangers were eight. Right. Well, the one thing, Derek, that, that got me throughout the game was, and, you know, the bit of hope, and I said this to, to my son as well, even although we were playing so bad, we were still creating goal-scoring opportunities, which was, you know, something, you know, that the players must have been thinking about as well. I know that Stephen Gerrard did say that as well. Uh, so you know, it, it, it maybe was one thing we knew that you know we could get in about them and we could create chances. And thankfully, what happened, and as you say, that game will go down as one of the classic European matches. And certainly for you know a comeback like that, we we'll be talking about that for years and years to come, Derek. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah. 
So we were hoping that that would kickstart our league campaign yeah. after after the, the winter <laughs> break. Which I text you after that when I said surely that's going to kick kickstart things for us. Oh, but how wrong we were! Exactly, the, the the roller coaster had been at the top turn, and now it was just spiralling back down to the bottom again. Derek in their next match. Yeah, it was on Sunday, the twenty third of February. It was a two each draw away to St Johnson. Now three changes were made for this one. We lined up McGregor, Tavernier, Goldson, Katic, Halliday, Jack, Aribo, Arfield, Kent, Hadji, and Morelis. On the subs bench with Edmondson, Davis, Ojo, Barker, Camberry and Stewart. Now, the one thing that I think most of us wanted to see is, well, given the fact that Morelis is going to be out for the next game against Braga, why, and we've only got this game to go in between, why not start Camberry? Yes, I, I was quite... And I know that, that Stephen Gerrard, has, he, he said that before, that he wants to try and always play his, his best team. But I was quite shocked about that as well, Derek. I would have liked to have seen him, you know, playing from the start as well. Uh, because certainly when he came on against Braga, he looked a real handful as well, you know, when he came on. So, uh, no, I, I was quite surprised at that myself. The first minute was a long ball played to the left of the box from a free kick. Catch gets a snapshot off but hits the side netting. Third minute, short corner from St Johnson getting the ball into the box. The attacker manages to get a shot off and a low dive and save from McGregor. However, on the seventh minute, St Johnson's went 1-0 up. It was a header forward at the halfway line by St Johnson. Catch chasing back, kicks the ball up in the air but doesn't clear it. Ball knocked forward into the box by the, the St Johnson attacker and just shoots it past McGregor who got a hand to it but never done enough. Yep. Don't know what Catch was playing it there. No, he had an absolute shocker, Derek, didn't he? It looked really easy for him to deal with, and it was an absolute horror show. That's all, all we can say about it an absolute horror show by him. And for, for a guy who the vast majority of fans have been, you know, championing for a while, and you know, he, you know, when he played at Parkhead, had scored the winner, and everybody was delighted. It looked as if he was turning. It's, it's kind of a bit of deja vu with him, isn't it? Because he did exactly the same thing last season, didn't he? Yep. So in the 11th minute, Kent with a shot on the left side, saved by the keeper but spilled. 12th minute, Jack with a half volley on the edge of the box, making the keeper pull off a good save and out for the corner. I remember that being a, an actually decent chance for, for Jack there. 23rd minute, St Johnson shot in the box after some good play but it goes over the bar. 40th minute, sustained pressure in and around St Johnson box but couldn't get a clean shot off. 47th minute, ball worked into the box, then out wide right of the box to Morelos who has a shot at an angle but saved by, by the keeper at the near post. And that's how it went into half time. So really, really poor in the first half. Yep. Uh, it certainly wasn't the reaction we were after. No. And a lot of players missing there. Yep. So Gerard done something quite bold. He taken Halliday off and he put Camberry on. So yes. a very attacking move at half yep. time. So, mm -hmm. and it paid off pretty much straight away because in the 49th minute, Camberry scored to make it one each. The ball was played out from the back, got down the right to Tavernier, played across into the box, but it was short. However, it bounced, missed by our, our player, and then right into the path of Camberry in the box with a lovely volley, which goes into the top left-hand corner. Great goal, Derek. As you say, ball... Played across, I thought it was going to get to our sort of, uh, first player, but as you say, it was missed by everyone, and it bounced just perfect, waist high for Cam Berry, swung round with the right foot, got an absolutely fantastic connection with it, and volleyed it right into the top corner. Tremendous goal, what a fantastic goal, you know, to score your first goal for, for the club, tremendous. Yep. 53rd minute, Morella shot in the box, but it was right at the keeper and saved. 66 minutes, St Johnson down the right, cross the cross play then on the deck, misses by it, missed by everyone, and McGregor uses his leg to get the ball away and out for the corner. Dangerous attack there. Yep. 68th minute, Kent on the left drives the ball towards goal, passes to Camberry in the box, who is a shot but a good save for the keeper and out for the corner. And then we went 2 1 up on the 70th minute with Joe Aribo scoring. Ball on the left to Katic, plays a good ball down the right wing to Camberry, who has a wonderful turn to put the defender on his arse, drives the ball forward to, towards goal, passes to Aribo in the centre of the box, who flicks it into the back of net. Brilliant goal. Decent pass by Katic, but it was all about Camberry there, just putting the defender on his arse yep. with that dummy and turn. It really was. It was a great move, Derek, and for a big guy, the control that he showed and the, the way that he turned to get it and the skill was just absolutely fantastic. And you know that had been him scored one and 
you know, created one, you know, we were, we were saying, you know, why, why is this guy no, no been on sooner? Do you know what I mean? So it was, uh, no, it was a fantastic goal. And at that point, Derek, we looked as if we were in complete control again and we were actually playing some really good stuff. And every time Camberry was getting the ball, you know, after that, he was causing them all sorts of problems. Yep, absolutely. 73rd minute, Camberry plays the ball over the top of the defence to Morelos, who has a shot at an angle but over the bar. He came off two minutes later on the 75th minute with Davis coming on for him. 77th minute, Hadji off and Stewart on. And then all of the, the work was outdone on the 79th minute because St Johnson pu- pulled a goal back and it went to each. Corner in from the right, Katic nonchalantly jumps up, clear, half clears it with his leg, but only falls to the St Johnson player who knocks it into the bottom left-hand corner. And to get the corner in the first place, it was almost a carbon copy of the, the actual go- first goal for for St Johnson with uh, Katic just knocking the ball high into the air and then eventually it gets cleared out for the corner. Just yep. Katic, as you said, had an absolute nightmare in this game. How he wasn't hooked, I do not know. It was, again, a horror show. And, you know, I, I, I do hate, uh, you know, ha- having a go at, at our players, but he's, you really have to sing, single him out here, Derek. It was two horrendous errors by him, and that's, you know, ultimately cost us two goals and cost us two points. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I don't know where to go with that one and did have a couple of other chances there on the 84th minute Jack with a shot from distance but went well wide and in 92nd minute Camberry had the ball in the back and it however he handled it to control it in the first yeah. place so correct, correct there but you know we've seen the worst of the Rangers support as well after this game and there was a lot of calls for to get Gerard out now. Well, that is just absolutely ludicrous. You know that the, where we've been, uh, where we were, and where we've come from in this in the last you know eighteen months with them has been night and day. Has the league form been good since the, the turn since the winter break? Of course it hasn't. Has there been failings? Has he made mistakes? Absolutely. I think he would be the first to admit that. But he is learning, and I think too many fans are getting wrapped up in this. <sighs> stop nine in a row, stop ten in a row thing. As I said on Twitter the other day, I'm worried more about Rangers getting 55 than Celtic's fictitious nine and ten in a row because we weren't there for, for most of it and we've been in a rebuilding process for the, the three or four years we've been back as well. So I don't class their nine and ten in a row and as I keep saying, it means nothing outside of, outside of Scotland anyway. So the whole... Gerard out thing Derek and I really don't pay much attention to it because it is you don't know who who it is that's posting these things, you don't know if it's wee laddies at 14 year old you don't know if it's you know guys in their 50s or their 60s that are you know still living in the sort of past guys that don't have a good grasp you, you don't actually know who, who it is that's, that's coming away with us on social media you really don't and uh, I don't pay too much attention to it at all. You don't know if the vast majority of the time on Twitter it's folk making up fake accounts and just doing stuff to wind folk up. I honestly don't know. I would honestly say that the vast, vast majority of Rangers fans out there are happy with Steven Gerrard being there. As we saw when the Bragg Airport last night with, with, with the videos, uh, the, everybody cheering them on. I've, you know, still certainly got faith in him. There, as you say, there has been mistakes. This is his first job in management. I would still like to think, though, Derek, that he should be calling on his more experienced staff in there. I mean, guys like Gary McAllister and that should, should be, in my opinion, there to help him as well. But I don't think he's getting... And, and, and I'm not slagging off McAllister here, but because he doesn't have an ex, a manager alongside him someday, you know, where, you know it's an experienced manager as he's number two, uh, Gary McAllister's making you know, sort of some rookie mistakes as well when he's giving him advice and stuff. So we've got to be mindful of that, Derek. But look at what we've achieved just in you know the last year with him, and there has been some you know disappointing results. But you've got to, and I hate giving them any credit, and it's it's not that that, that, that I'm giving them credit, but we would have been expecting Celtic to have dropped a few points. Let's be honest. We wouldn't have expected them to have a 100% record since 
the last old firm game. I certainly didn't. I certainly was saying to myself, they'll draw a couple of matches. They might get beat a game, as as we will as well. But I didn't expect us to, you know, perform so badly in certain games, and I certainly didn't expect them to be winning all their games as well. Which I'm still surprised at, to be honest with you. And unfortunately, it has now made quite a large gap in points. The, the league's not over, but it's certainly out of our hands now. We've got to make sure we win every single match and hope that they get beaten a couple of games or draw a few games. And I'm more worried about us, the new Derek, not getting the hundred percent and you know and, and winning all our games rather than them because uh, we have we are now taking the pressure off them and we should be putting pressure on them. So, certainly the, the the way that we finished you, you know, before the winter break, we should have really been ramping up the pressure on them and unfortunately we've not been able to do it. No. I mean, as much as Celtic's been good, I don't think they've improved. I don't think they've got worse. It's certainly us that's that's got worse and we've taken the pace off. We were neck and neck with Celtic going into the break. We we're actually yep. slightly better than them yep. if you take into account the, the, the potential for the game in hand, but we've still got um so we've clearly won the ones that have dropped the ball. We've got yep. to accept that and we've got to now hope that they will obviously drop points, as you said, but worry about ourselves first yeah. also, as you've said. Um, it's, uh, we, it's what I think a lot of fans need to remember is Celtic haven't beaten us to be in this position. We have, you know, it's it's been down to us not being able to beat other teams. It's not had anything to do with them in games against them and defeats against them or you know or victories against them it's been clearly down to us not beating other teams so we've we've basically defeated ourselves here Derek nothing to do with them yeah absolutely so we'll leave the dismal situation of the league there and we'll go into another fantastic night the game was last night or two nights ago uh, when we listened to this Wednesday the 26th of February Incredibly, a 1-0 win away against Braga to put us through 4-2 on aggregate. We lined up McGregor, Tavernier, Goldson, Edmondson, Barisic, Davis, Jack, Arfield, Kent, Hadji and Kimberry. On the subs bench, we had Fotheringham, Halliday, Katic, Aribo, Kamara, Ojo and Stewart. Now, after 15 seconds, a slack pass back, a slack pass <laughs> out of our defence that almost let Braga in. And yeah. I sent you a message saying it's going to be a long night. And you replied, yes, I know, I'm hiding behind a cushion. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it was what, uh, what what minute did that cushion get chucked away, Dave? Probably we about no, it didn't mate. I was still hanging <laughs> hanging on to it right at the end of the game, I'll be honest with you. But no, it was uh, I was exactly the same as you. I thought shit, fifteen seconds gone and we're already making mistakes and putting ourselves under pressure, which is what we weren't you know, wanting to do. Thankfully though, Derek, that is the only sort of bad point that I seem to remember in the whole game for us because from there on, I'll be honest with you, I thought we were in complete control. I wouldn't say complete control, but certainly we had a majority of it. They had a lot of possession, um, absolutely, and towards the end of the game they did try and batter us, but they never penetrated the defence because nope. we were immense in defence yep. in this game. As I said, we had the first, you know, maybe few minutes we were a wee bit shaky, a few bad passes, but then we settled quite quickly into it. On the eighth minute, it was a quick break from midfield going 2v2. Arfield managed to slide the ball to Camberry on the left, took it into the box and had a blistering shot, but it was right at the keeper who yeah. saved it. Um, much like Morelis' one in the first leg, as I said in the post-match, it's almost a case that this happens often. It doesn't matter what team it is, um, if it's us or if it's another team or whoever. The ball, the attacker always shoots right at the keeper, and I don't know if the keeper's bright shirt seems to act as a beacon, and that's like a place to aim for. Um, it's maybe just one of these things. Yeah, it's it, it, it was a great chance, Derek. Uh, and I, I, again, I said to my, my laddie when we were watching it, when you have chances like that, especially in these big games, you've really got to. To, to make the most of it, and uh, but unfortunately, as you say, he had it straight the keeper. Yep. Nineteenth minute, lovely ball down the right wing. Hadji beats one defender, dinks it over the other, gets the ball into the box, cuts it back to Camberry who shoots it wide. Uh, it was closed down, however, it was a great chance. Yep. Hadji was absolutely immense with this yep. one. Yeah, definitely superb. 
21st minute, had you with a free kick from 25 yards, but it went well over the bar. 25th minute, Braga on the left, a lot of time with the ball and allowed uh, allowed it to get it wide to their player who plays a great cross in, in the middle of the box. The attacker gets his head to it and McGregor had to pull off a great save to tip it over the bar. Yep. And that was really the only thing he had to do all yep. game. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. 29th minute, Kent loses possession on the right side, allows Braga to get the ball forward, puts it in it to the left side of the pitch, a dangerous cross into the middle, the attacker gets his foot to it but puts it wide. 33rd minute, Braga with the ball down the right, two lovely touches by the attacker on the edge of the box who had a shot, but it was a weak effort at an angle and gathered by McGregor. And then, 43rd minute, a penalty given for us. Corner in, bounced right in front of their defender, up and off his arm. Clear penalty, Val yep. was checked and it was given. How many times have things like that happened in <laughs> Scotland and that's not being given? I know. But. Yeah. yeah, but. But. The jinx of the penalty struck again because had you taken the penalty... And it was a fair fair play. It was actually a pretty good penalty, but the keeper made an even better save, and he guessed the the right the right side on the left uh, on the left hand side of of his goal. Um, what do we need to do to score penalties? Derek, I've, I've been saying this. We, we've spoke about it in the last few pods. I know that you you, you go with players who are confident. I would rather go. You know, somebody that takes a penalty is someone that's the sort of dead ball specialist. And I know that had he scored a free kick in the last game, but it was a deflection. So I would always say, why not give it to somebody else who is a fantastic, you know, dead ball specialist? And we've got one at left back in Barisic. So why does Barisic never taking any of these penalties? I've, I've, I've said it for a while. Uh, you know, it's it's quite incredible. I don't know what it is we've got to do because, I mean, that's been... Morelos has missed. We know what happened with Tavernier. That was Hadji. Who who, who else is, to, is, is taking penalties and, and missed as well? There's, I'm, I'm sure there's more than that, but it's it just seems to go on, especially big games, big times like that. If we'd have got a goal just before half-time, it would have been, you know, absolutely fantastic. But... Uh, it wasn't to be, and again, we were absolutely gutted, and we were saying to ourselves, we should be winning this game with the clear-cut chances we had, and we weren't, and, you know, we were, but Braga were still in it at that point, so, you know, bitterly disappointing at that stage, Derek, but yeah. at the same time, it was nil nil over there, and we were playing pretty well and controlling the game. Yeah, um, it was a good first half, if not a little frustrating, as we had done so much right, but we just couldn't cement the chances we had. Um, limited chances, we've limited, as I said, we limited the chances to one good chance for Braga with the McGregor save, and the defence was clearing its lines first time, which was a big change. Yeah. A lot of the time we were taking um, too many touches, and we were trying to do the fancy thing and play it out. They were just clearing their lines, even if it meant putting it out for a corner. They were doing the the rule 101, clear your lines, which was great to see. Uh, no nonsense defending. We had beaten their defensive line on a number of occasions. Uh, however, multiple offsides, especially from Camberry. Yeah. I, don't, that, I mean, maybe that was the fact that they were again playing a very high line, um, was played into that fact and they just couldn't read it properly. But you need to try and read the game a wee bit better in terms of that. If they're playing the high line, try and just check your run. We'll see how it works out for the for the next game if he plays. He's obviously going to be cup tied for the next game, but um, we'll see if he, if he sorts that out. But, you know, as you said, nil-nil, the game was still yep. in our, our hands at that point, and, you know, Braga and, had to make changes, which they did going into half time. And, and I actually thought, you know, even though we're, we're talking about Cam Berry, I thought he had an excellent first half, Derek. He was fantastic at holding the ball up he caused them all sorts of problems he really should have scored as you know as we've said as well one if not two chances uh, but I certainly thought he was playing well and that was the only sort of negative part of his game was the fact he was getting caught offside a lot but we see that with Morelos as well don't we he gets caught offside loads of times as well so but no again go, going back we were pleased it was still nil nil but we really should have been winning at that point. 
Yeah. So, 48th minute, a quick break up the park after winning the ball in the middle, passed out to the wide left and then cut back into Barisic on the edge of the box in the middle, took a shot but snuffed out by the defender and cleared. 55th minute, lovely pass on the right into the box to Camberry, beating the offside trap, got to the touchline, cuts it back but it was too fast paced and, sh- and it was at shin height and volleyed over the bar. And then we went, amazingly, we went 1-0 up on the 60th minute. Great patient play, knocking the ball out from the defence, a lovely long ball over the top of the, the Braga high line by Hadji into space Kent who had to make up some distance uh, but he used his pace to get by the defender, got the ball on the left took it into the box and shoots past the keeper into the bottom right corner Just um, a lot has been said about the Hadji ball but the work that Kent had to do that that was just amazing and you know, given the fact that what we're going to, the, the, the money we're going to get for this next round, he's went a well, hell of a way for paying his transfer fee there hasn't he? D- definitely Derek, he's, he, he's taken a lot of stick recently from our fans I even said that to you as well, that I thought he was maybe needing a wee ch- ch- shot in the sidelines just to, you know, to try and you know, g- get him to, to I don't know if it's, it's a confidence thing with him or no, but that uh, was fantastic. The, the the ball from Hadji again, absolutely tremendous. But as you say, we'll not take anything away for Kent. He still had to the the pace that he had to show, the the upper body strength as well, just to sort of shrug the man off, and then that uh, shot across the goalkeeper into the bottom corner. It was a fantastic finish. Finally, we had scored, Derek. We were getting to that stage that we thought all oh, these chances, the penalty that we just weren't going to score. It was, it was just fantastic. Another one of these nights and goals, you know, that, that, that we'll not forget. A fantastic moment for us and giving us that cushion because we knew that Braga would now have to score two goals. Yeah. Uh, and the way the defence was playing, Derek, I'm not saying I was confident, but I was more confident with the way the defence was playing than I had been in the last few games, put it that way. It was just a great moment, Derek, fantastic. Yep, um, so 63rd minute long shot from Braga, from the Braga attacker who was drifting to the left and then shot right but went well wide of the post. McGregor had it covered anyway. 71st minute, lots of possession after a corner from Braga, probing, eventually crossing from the left. Defender gets a great head to it and uh, just wide of the post. Uh, 72nd minute, Hadji off and a rebo on. And then we had the ball in the back of the net on the 76th minute. Um, however, it was um, offside. Goldson got his head to it straight from the corner. The keeper managed to get his fingertips to it and put it on at the post comes out to Arfield who was miles offside and knocks into the back of the net uh, I know some people were celebrating but I could see um, he was offside by miles yeah. as well which is unfortunate it was a good finish by Arfield as well because he was completely off balance Aye. When, when he hit it but as you say he, 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 he was offside so yeah, and it was a great header from Garth Goldson yeah. as well. So, um, 77th minute, Camberry off and Ojo came on and clearly he was just told to take the ball to the corner as well because he, he was actually quite good as well <laughs> for what he'd done and he came on. Which, you know, called I, was, I was actually thinking about you rip your hair out when you see them <laughs> come, come, coming off the bench, Derek, but there well, you go. I was just going to say, call me a doctor, I'm actually praising Ojo here. But... <laughs> Um, it's 80th minute it was a free kick from Braga and the ball off the attacker's shoulder and over the bar 91st minute Ojo with a shot from distance tipped round the post and out of the corner by the keeper and he was bloody unlucky with that as well Yeah. Um, but you know it was a weird sensation that we knew that that as much as Braga needed two goals, you know what we were like. We would lose a goal and with ten minutes to go, and it would make the make the last you know five ten minutes really really nervy. But I never felt that 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 game because the defence had played so well. I, I heard an interesting stat. Am I right in saying that Rangers have not conceded a goal from a cross throughout the, the the whole of the European campaign? And you know that kind of that sort of Golson's the way he plays. He loves dealing with cross balls and so he can head them out and that's how that team were playing as well, Derek. So, uh, But you've got to say for George Edmondson coming into this team, Derek, absolutely phenomenal as well. Yeah, I think he got man of the match for us as well and he, he just... He looked as if he had been in the team for years. He was just so self-assured, which was amazing to see. And I think he's still only, what, 22? 22. 22. I just, just brought I mean, getting thrown in at the deep end because that's really what he was last night, so... It was it, it was fantastic. He, he, he had he had a lot last night, Derek. His control, his awareness of where the players were, uh, you know, fantastic in the air and just didn't look panicked whatsoever. 
and that's exactly what what we've been missing. Uh, and I think I've seen another stat about Ed- Edmondson since he's you know he's played nine games for Rangers and seven of those games have had a clean sheet. He's also scored one and made one assist out of his nine games. So you know if that's not a start from it remaining the team, I certainly don't don't know what is. But you'll not get a, yeah, you know a game against harder op- opposition and you know at this level than the team that were the top goal scorers in the Europa League. So yeah. hats off to the guy, absolutely fantastic. And I think, what was it, we are the first Scottish team since 2011 to win two legs of of a tournament after the qualifiers as well. And we are the first team to beat Braga at home in any competition this year as well. Yep, and also the first team ever to qualify for the last 16 who were playing in the first round of the Euro, you know, of the Europa League, we're the, the only team that's ever done that. That's oh, just phenomenal what we've done this Incredible, year. Incredible, yeah, it yeah. really is absolutely brilliant. So, in the I'll get in, into the the bad bit. The now the league table for the Scottish Premiership: played twenty seven, won twenty, drawn four, lost three, scored sixty three, conceded eighteen, goal difference plus forty five, and we're on sixty four points. We're sitting in second, twelve behind Celtic with a game in hand, but shockingly. They've got a 20 better goal difference than us. Yeah. We're 22 points ahead of Motherwell and we've got a game in hand over them as well. Now, the bit we're obviously interested in, the results tonight in Europe, there's a couple of meaty ties that we could get, a couple of shockers in terms of people getting put out. Obviously, didn't expect Celtic to get put out, but um, they did. And Arsenal got put out on away goals as well. Derek, that's a lie because you told me that you actually had Copenhagen down <laughs> in your coom the night, so that's a complete lie. I had a sneaky suspicion, Derek. I was uh, winding up a couple of Celtic fans that I know from work that uh, it was going to remain nil nil in Copenhagen. We're going to get like a 93rd minute winner and stuff like that. But you said as well, Derek, it doesn't matter who we get now. We are going to be the underdogs, and that's what we want. We we want to be the underdogs now, uh, and it's sort of. I don't think there's any pressure on us at all at this stage. You know who who we're going to get or whatever. We should just really go enjoy it. I'm hoping we get a huge team. I really am. I'm hoping that we get a Manchester United or somebody like that just for a so massive occasion. Who are the, you got the teams there that we can get? Yep, I'll tell you now, Derek. So the teams who Rangers could get in the next round are Basel or Baal Wolves Bayer Leverkusen Roma Istanbul Baskir LASK Wolfsburg Getafe Olympiacos Shakhtar Donetsk Copenhagen Inter Milan Manchester United or Seville obviously the last three being teams that well as I said I, I, I would like to get Manchester United just as a you know it'd be a huge game but there are going to be some some difficult ones as well but as I've said bring it on there's no pressure on us I think that we could go you know really if if, if, if we can play like we did last night then we're going to give any team serious headaches so and we seem to raise our game in Europe don't we yeah I mean this is the thing, there's no mugs now. In, in fact, when you look at Europe uh, overall, there's never any mugs in Europe. And um, certainly there's, when you get to these rounds, you are right in the nitty gritty now. Not a lot of teams would want to face us now, no. I think. And that's the big thing, is we know how we can play in Europe if, if you know the other teams play a certain way as well, which they've obviously got to be mindful. For me, again, Manchester United would be great because they're no great shakes, let's be honest. But I'm not saying we'll beat them, but I'm saying that it would be a good glamour tie, yep. good British fixture. Manchester, they better brace themselves again this time. <laughs> um, and, you know, you, you can't rule out anybody, you know, Getafe, you know, but Ajax, you know, yep. semi finalists of the Champions League last I year. I don't, I do not want a Spanish team, Derek, because historically we do not do well against Spanish teams. We always seem to do well against Portuguese teams. We've had a, a fair good record against Dutch and German teams, but we never seem to beat the Spanish teams at all. So I would like us to stay well clear of Spanish teams just now, but you know. Bring it on. I'm delighted. I've went through years and years and years, Derek, of us being on top in Scottish football and getting dumped to Europe by absolutely useless pudding teams, even when we were absolutely hammering everybody in Scotland and we were way ahead of everyone. 
we would get beat by duffer teams and I was all, I always told, always, always, it was thrown in our faces and Rangers fans of a certain age should all, all agree with me. The media as well in Scotland, it was always, oh, well, you haven't done anything in Europe. You've not done anything against the top teams in the world. Scotland means nothing. I find it quite ironic now that the, the media are completely praising that lot for their achievements of, as you said, Derek, a completely tainted eight titles going in for nine titles when it was us you know when we won it it was it was always a shrug of the shoulder you've not done anything in Europe you've not proved anything and it's quite incredible how you know it's not pl played out like that anymore so I'm delighted Derek of it's, it's great to see us in this position in Europe and uh, I definitely think again to talk about the manager it's the Stephen Gerrard factor because if you can look at all of these teams that will be looking at us to play us, they'll all be saying, oh, well, Stephen Gerrard's the manager. Look at his European pe pedigree, so they're going to be a, a fantastic team. And we do, again, after I've said it already, we raise your game in Europe, don't we? Well, somebody put it to me today that, you know, Gerrard is just effectively working his ticket. He's only trying for Europe. Well, see, to be honest with you, if Gerrard is only trying to work his ticket, then he needs Rangers to be successful. Being successful not only means the league, it means competing in every single competition yep. you're in. Put it this way, Celtic can get 15 in a row as far as I'm concerned if we win the Europa League this year. Aye, no, I, 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 I agree with you Derek, that would be something that's, that would be incredible and you know, I would s sacrifice something like that as well. To, to win a trophy like that so absolutely brilliant long long may it continue Derek and you know we'll be looking forward to the draw tomorrow yes. or today as it will be when the pod comes out yes Rangers FC now Rangers FC <clears throat> another team back to the uh, round of 16 uh, after some years finalists in uh, the Manchester final 2008 against Zenit against Bayer Leverkusen so, for Rangers FC, we have Bayer Leverkusen, one of the former winners, 1988. So, Rangers FC versus Bayer, null fear, Leverkusen. So, we're going into the next games now, another big one on Saturday the 29th of February, away against Hearts in the Scottish Cup quarter-final. That's a 17.30 kick-off. I'm hopefully going to get it, because as I said in the post-match, I'm travelling back up from Newcastle. So, I'll be a, the four of us trying to huddle round our, our phone and try to no, get some sort of stream. Don't, don't do huddles, Derek. <laughs> right enough. <laughs> There'll be four of us trying to congregate round a phone yes, and that's better. That's better. Yep. Yes. So obviously there won't be a post match from me out after that. Um Wednesday the fourth of March at home to Hamilton, that's in the Premiership. That's a nineteen forty five kickoff. Then Sunday the eighth of March away to Ross County in the Premiership. That's a twelve hundred kickoff. The first leg of the last sixteen is Thursday the twelfth of March. And then another big one Sunday the fifteenth of March at home to Celtic in the Premiership. That's a twelve kickoff. Then Thursday the 19th of March, um, that's in the, the second leg of the last 16 in the Europa League. I am actually in Tenerife if the coronavirus doesn't hit it any anymore. Um, so I'll be watching that probably in the Blue Bell there. The Blue Bell, yep. It's good stuff. And then there's sat it should have been Saturday the 21st of March at home to St Mirren in the Premiership. That was meant to be a 1500 kickoff. That is likely going to be moved now. However, there's a fixture congestion now by the look of it, especially if we get through this round into the quarter-final. So we've still got a game in hand to play. God knows when we'll actually be able to play that. I can see us having to do another 2008 again yeah. and um, you know, a, a massive pile-up of a game every other day. Um, so we'll need to see how that plays out. They yep. got absolutely lambasted for it the last time, but let's just see if we can get there first. Yeah, exactly. I will know... Uh, we'll know Count our chickens until they've hatched, Derek. No. So, we'll move on now and we'll go into the classic match. And there it is! The final whistle's gone! Rangers have won the European Cup Winners' Cup! So, Dave, what match have you got for us this time? Derek, I have got an old firm classic from 1994. I've been looking at stuff in Instagram and stuff and I could see my hero, Brian Loudrup, more and more on social media. And I thought, you know, out of all the classic matches and the fact that it was my hero, we've not actually covered a lot of games with Brian Loudrup in it. And I was looking back some old matches and I came across this one. It was played 
on the 30th of October 1994 where we played Celtic. The, the Rangers team on that day, Andy Gorham in goals, Fraser Wisher at right back, uh, David Robertson at left back. A debut for Alan McLaren, centre half along with Basil Bowley. Midfield was Stuart McCall, uh, Ian Murray and Charlie Miller with Peter Hustra, Mark Hatley and of course Brian Loudrop up front for Rangers. The Celtic team that day, Gordon Marshall, Gary Smith, Tom Boyd, McAnally, Brian O'Neill, Phil O'Donnell, Byrne, Paul McStay, Donnelly, Andy Walker and John Collins. So Rangers got off to a great start, winning the ball in midfield. This was just in the first minute. Uh, back to Stuart McCall. He runs and puts a through ball through to Brian Loudrop on the left. Fantastic cross. Uh, but headed out for a corner. From that corner, Brian loads up to Mark Cately with a bullet header, but was cleared off the line by John Collins. Really un- unlucky there. Then a chance for Celtic in the seventh minute. Andy Walker shoots from inside the box after the ball in, but comfortably saved by Andy Gorham. Fifteenth minute, Stuart McCall picks up a clearance from across on the left. He shoots from outside the box, but it was well on the left-hand post. It's still nil-nil at that stage. 17th minute chance for Celtic. Collins on the left wing. A cross and a glance and header for Simon Donnelly. Almost the face of, of the goal and just past the post. Just right right across the face of the goal, I should say, and past the post. Stuart McCall having a fantastic game for Rangers. He was just winning absolutely everything in midfield. The Celtic weren't getting a, you know, a sniff of anything. And then on the 25th minute, Rangers opened the score. A touch from Hitley. It's picked up by Boyd. It's caught by Charlie Miller. Through now for Hitley! Oh, that is a magnificent goal by Mark Hitley! 25 minutes gone. Terrific play by young Charlie Miller. Andy Gorham with the goal kick, he hit it high up to Mark Cately who nods it on, picked up uh, by Tom Boyd but Charlie Miller slides in, wins the ball and plays in Mark Cately at the edge of the box who fires in a tremendous curling shot into the top corner of the goal to make it 1-0 to Rangers, fantastic goal. 26 minute Phil O'Donnell with a diving header from a deep cross which was just past the post. 32nd minute Brian Loudrop runs down the wing Turns one way, then another cross onto Mark Cately, but he unfortunately heads over the bar. But 39th minute, Tom Boyd with a hopeful low cross across the front of our defence, and Byrne hits a low shot into the net to make it 1 1, totally against the run of play. Really felt quite hard done to there, but we didn't have long to wait until we retook the lead. Just quickly taken, played shot by McCall to Loudrop. Good ball through again for Robertson, it's Hitley! Oh, tremendous play by Rangers! What a stunning ball through by Loudrop to Robertson, the cross from Robertson and Mark Hitley gets his second goal of the match! It was Brian Loudrop on the left-hand side with a ball down the wing to Davy Robertson who races to the byline, a low cross into Mark Hitley who stabs it into the back of the net to put Rangers 2-1 up just before half-time and it was no more than we deserved because we'd been playing absolutely fantastic at that stage. So Rangers 2-1 up at half-time, great lead for that. Then just in the second half, Celtic on the 46th minute were across into the box. Falconer, he shoots, but it was headed away by Basil Bowley. Then on the 52nd minute, Brian Loudrop on the right-hand side stops the ball dead in the halfway line, then flicks out to the wing, sprints past the defender, puts a cross into Hately. Fantastic ball in, but it was just cleared at the last second by the Celtic defender. It would have been a tremendous goal if that had went in. 60th minute, Celtic were across from the left from uh, John Collins. A looping header from Andy Walker actually came off the top of the bar and out. And then on the 65th minute, we put it beyond doubt. And here's a break on for Loudrop. Showing tremendous pace, he's past the goalkeeper! A sensational goal by Loudrop! 65 minutes gone! Loudrop! A free kick by Wisher, almost on uh, the byline. Up to Mark Cately, who nods the heads the ball onto Brian Loudrop. 
he runs into the box with a defender on him, rounds Marshall and slides the ball into the net to make it 3-1 to Rangers. Fantastic play, tremendous stuff. Mark Haitley winning the ball, heading it on. He was so good at that, tremendous. Uh, 73rd minute, John Collins was shot from outside the box. A great save from Andy Gorham out from the corner. And then another great chance, almost identical to his first goal. Ball won in midfield. Brian Loudrup, the last defender, Ball played through, a sprint's clear, one and one with Marshall, takes it too far wide this time and sidesteps the keeper to the byline, but he was off balance and loses the ball, he really should have shot early, unfortunately. 88th minute, Ali McCoy comes on for Brian Loudrup, had a fantastic game, and then from then on, Rangers really did control the game and saw it out. Fantastic result, fantastic play, Brian Loudrup, absolutely sensational and uh, also a great debut for Alan McLaren as well. A great game to remember, guys. Go back and watch it. I'm sure you can remember the goals from the uh, you know from the way that I've been describing them. But a uh, fantastic game to go back and watch it. Derek, can you remember much about it when you were looking back? I can remember some of the goals, yeah, because I was just on looking on highlight videos and stuff like that. But yeah, a uh, great great game. Um, and I can't believe that was Alan McLaren's debut as well. It's yeah, just it was, yeah. A good, talented player, and, and uh, you know, career ended too too soon, wasn't it? Yeah, I know it. It's, it certainly was Derek, but at the same time, in the short career that he had, he did achieve a lot. He, you know, he he achieved more than you know of a lot of players who'd been play, who have been playing the game for two twenty years plus could only dream of. So, uh, you know, he, he did get championships and cup cups with Rangers and played in the Champions League as well. So. Uh, you know, great. But as I say, if you if you want to go back and watch a fantastic old firm game, great victory. Brian Loudrop, Mark Kelly, absolutely fantastic. Go back and watch that one. It was a joy to watch. Yep. So Dave will be back with another classic match the next episodes, and now it's time to go into the news. <laughs> So, a few bits and pieces to go over the news. We'll try and wrap this up soon, but we've got a lot to talk about as usual. First one is, is a, the way Rangers issued a statement saying that we've served proceedings on L, LGB Sports Apparel Limited trading as elite for payment of £2.8 million plus interest and expenses relates to what they owe us as part of the kit manufacturing, etc. Then we released a statement stating they were actively seeking a partner or partners for the club's official kit manufacture, retailing and licensing rights for the, the next season onwards. We've also taken Hummel off the yeah. website and training ground. So, interesting developments there. Not a good sign and it was kind of mooted that this was going to happen a few weeks ago. Not very good if we're having to sue for money, is it? No, it's not, Derek. And I'm I'm a bit confused now as to the ins and outs of the Rangers shop and stuff like that. I've been seeing a lot of things online where, where, where people are saying, look, we need to boycott the shop now and things like that. So I'm, I'm really quite... I don't know if you can shed any light on that, Derek, but is there is there any money going to the club now with the sale of replica strips and stuff like that? Your guess is as good as mine. Um, certainly, I think with Rangers putting out these statements that we're having to sue for money and that we've basically removed Hummel and we're looking for new partners, is that I would say no. It's, it's a shame, Derek, because we were all extremely uh, happy, delighted with the Hummel deal and the fact, you know, that we, the, everybody was going out and buying the, you know, the strips and stuff like that. So there's not, a, there's still not been any uh, official word on it though, Derek, but, uh, you know, certainly when, when they opened the shop and stuff like that, you know, at St Enoch Square, you know, everybody was going there to get their, you know, their stuff and now it's, it's you know, that's up there now, the same with J, JD Sports as well. So, it just it never seems to end, does it? No. I mean, I think this is the, the old adage about, you know, you could have a deal that, well, obviously I think it stems from elite apparently getting into bed with Sports Direct and they're, they're becoming, you know, official distributor, Sports Direct are becoming official distributor. I think that's what that's about. And it's the usual thing, 50% of nothing is, ends up at nothing at the end of the day. So... It's one of these things that surely Elite must know that if people are going to boycott Sports Direct, they're going to get fuck all money from it. So yeah. I don't know what they're playing at, but maybe that's been the game all along. I don't yeah. know, but we'll need to wait and, 
wait and see. Strangely though, Kilmarnock have announced that Hummel will be their kit manufacturer for the next three years. So, All right, okay. interesting turn of events there. Next thing here is with the collapse of Thomas Cook, we've been obviously looking for a new travel partner and we've partnered up with Corporate Travel Management, so CTM. They'll provide supporters with travel packages including flights, accommodation, match tickets for European away trips. So it was quite clear that Thomas Cook were struggling to package things together for us given their their difficulties I still maintain though that given the industry is quite volatile it can be quite difficult and costly for airlines to package things up at the last minute and, and companies to package things up I wouldn't be surprised come the start of the qualifiers if you know there's a week to, to organise things like there was yeah. before it will be a struggle for them to, to organise it so yep. need to wait and see Next thing here, another kind of shocking piece of news here. Dave King has had his house broken into only days after he was held up at gunpoint outside his office. So I think he's had a laptop stolen and yeah, things stolen as well. So not very good. And, no. You know, before he was even talking about coming out of South Africa. So I'll certainly not put his mind at ease. Yeah. Next thing, and even just as shocking, uh, Michael Stewart has been allowed back on the BBC mm. after a couple of weeks off. Obviously, after the whole gym, his meltdown on Sports Sound, uh, he was he's been eventually allowed back on. So I don't think he's been back on yet. But BV, BBC have stated that he's been reminded of his responsibilities. Utter bullshit, because yeah. he would have been fully aware of that beforehand. Same with the producer and his, um, basically his, his co-host. Uh, he should have been sacked on the spot. And bear in mind, this is on the back of the, the, his, the, his comments have likely riled some absolute weapon up enough to attack Jim Trainer while he was out walking his dog in Cumbernauld, and he was apparently hit with some rocks as well. Not want to get into that too much, obviously, with the police dealing with it, but the Rangers have, have stated that it's clear that BBC, BBC Scotland have no intention to deal with us in a fair and reasoned manner, no. so we're no longer resuming talks with the BBC. Robert Stuart Robertson has previously stated that we're dealing with BBC London in, in regards to this so I don't know what the hell's happened there but it's now time for an outright banned for, for, for BBC Scotland as far as I'm concerned bear in mind BBC Scotland are not banned they've just revoked um, the credentials for one of the reporters who was unfairly treating us and they still have yet to apologise for some of the stuff yeah, so no quite right Derek we've we've been saying it for, for a long time the, the, the coverage that we get on the likes of sports scene and all that is shocking the, the comments that are made about us for, for, for that man are absolutely shocking as well. He's playing to his audience. We slag off Chris Sutton, Derek, but Chris Sutton is a wind-up merchant. We know that he says things to get reaction. He says things, you know, on online to, to get a reaction. Whereas Michael Stewart, I genuinely think it's just pure hatred with the man. I, I really do. And it's, uh, so, so some of the stuff that he's came away with has been absolutely shocking. And as you say, it would have just have took an apology, him to be taken off the air, but they're sticking by their man and he'll certainly not change. He'll still go his way to you know, try and badmouth us wherever he can. Next one here, another ludicrous thing from the SFA. Their made up a charge they hit us with for our players and staff has ended up on us getting a £10,000 fine for Michael Beal getting sent yeah. off and the gestures by Morellis and Kent against Celtic and another 5k fine for Tom Col Colshaw getting sent off against Hibs. Bear in mind the most that the SFA have ever fined people for something, anything remotely similar, is only about two and a half thousand. So, where the money's, where the charges came from, is, is un unbelievable. Um, what's even more amazing is that they've came out and said that the players. Kent and Morelis weren't punished for their gestures. However, Claire White, the compliance officer, included the incidents in the overall club conduct charge. Hold the bus a minute. Morelis was given a second yellow card and obviously then suspended, so yep. he was punished. So yep. it's a double punishment. Totally, yep, completely. So the, regardless of you think that they're separate, they're not the same thing because the club are without one of their players for selection because of that ban now. So Rangers have said they're going to appeal it. We'll see what, what transpires for it, but just ludicrous decision once again from the SAFA, which we'll get onto in a couple of stories' time. Next thing here, two SNP councillors have been cleared in any wrongdoing of Rangers not being allowed to use the Glasgow Council-owned Glasgow Life Complex outside the, the stadium as a fan zone. They were cleared by a panel who have some of their own party in the panel. 
not for me to say, but I'll let you decide on that one, <laughs> the, 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 the line that they've taken there. In any case, Rangers Charity Foundation have taken over the long-term lease of the complex and will be upgrading it and it won't be used as a fan zone, it'll be used as what it's intended for. I don't think many Rangers fans agree with that because the Rangers Charity Foundation have had to basically fund this, but yeah. in, unless there's a, a long-term thing that they're not telling us that they've got in, in mind, so... Rangers under-19s were knocked out of the UEFA Youth League playoff at Furhill after a 4 0 tanking by Atletico Madrid. By all accounts, we were completely outclassed. However, uh, we play with, I think, uh, youngsters compared with the normal age of run, around about under-19s for that. So, good experience for them. Uh, unlucky for them, but um, unfortunately, it came as a loss. Yep. Rangers Colts narrowly lost yeah. to Inverness Cali, Cali Thistle in the Challenge Cup semi-final. They lost 2-1. And just a, a, a complete bizarre SFA ruling here. Inverness got the wrong, a player wrongly sent off. The ref thought it was a dive. It clearly wasn't. To a man, our fans and management and even our players have stated that it wasn't a sending off or a dive. Inverness appealed it. They initially lost and then bizarrely the SFA stated they're going to review it again as one of the panel of three that reviewed it initially were, were basically disregarding some of the rules or disregarding something to do with it and they've now found in favour in Inverness and the red card's been rescinded. Just absolutely, you, you couldn't make it up with the SFA and the way they deal with their disciplinary committee. I know. Uh, going back to the game, Derek Rangers were the or, or the, the, the Colts were were very very un unlucky in that game. I sat and watched it. It was on BBC Alba. Uh, really unlucky. They were winning one nil, and uh, unfortunately, they you, you know they got put. Out. I was desperate f for them to get through to the final uh, to play Wraith Rovers because uh, that would have been a fantastic achievement again, but wasn't to be. And as you say, the the decision. Uh, by the you know the governing body Scottish football over that uh, I think the guy's name was, is it uh, Keating's his name is yeah uh, was quite incredible but it has been o overturned now Derek and he can play in the next game which is which is good for him, but quite incredible. But doesn't it surprise us, does it, really? No, absolutely not. Another one for the youngsters as well. They were unfortunately knocked out of the quarter-final of the Alcas Cup. However, Charlie Lindsay was named MVP of the tournament and likened to Wayne Rooney. So obviously they won the, the tournament last year, um, um, but unfortunately they couldn't uh, repeat that and defend their trophy. Yeah, no, unfortunately not. Again, some quality, quality teams in there, Derek, but you know they apparently played you know extremely well and you know again the the opportunity for, for these young players to be playing with the best players in the world at that age group and still going you know as far as they did is still a fantastic achievement so well done to the guys for, for getting as far as they did yeah, absolutely brilliant. And, you know, we've, we've said that for a couple of years now, we have some very promising prospects coming yep. through. So it's, it's hopefully they can um, get into the first team as well um, when, when their time is ready. Uh, a bit of just brilliant banter there. The official Twitter, Twitter account, not the Rangers one, the official Twitter account briefly changed their, their header image to Ryan Kent celebrating in Braga. Uh, they actually put a tweet out saying that they needed a new header image and a Rangers fan, I can't remember who it was, he sent them the, Bra the, the Ryan Kent image and briefly it was up there. Just absolutely genius. I'm sure if the, the Orcs got some sort of, if they, they got wind of that, they would be going into complete meltdown at that stage. But brilliant. I'm surprised they're not Derek, to be perf perf perfectly honest with you. but uh, They've got enough to deal with today, haven't they? Well, again, Derek, I don't know how much you're wanting to go into that. I've not, I really don't know much about it. I didn't see it, but I don't know if uh, you're going to be having a wee section on that. Yeah. I don't want to do it, but I feel as if it's pertinent to, to mention it briefly. I'm not going to go into too much depth of it because of ongoing investigations, ongoing court cases, ongoing police investigations as well. But Channel 4, Alex Thompson, um, the, that that man who tried to do us in as well, um, he has done a two-segment investigative piece on the Channel 4 News at 7 over the last couple of days, basically going into about paedophile rings and, um, the, you know, basically uh, child trafficking uh, from Scottish football down to English football, obviously highlighting Celtic in that, and they've left them under no questions need to be asked about our Celtic Boys Club and Celtic 
linked. They are intrinsically linked, undoubtedly, and he's left Celtic in tatters with that one, and I think they've got a lot of questions to answer. The first thought, obviously, is with the survivors. You know, it's an absolute shocking and abysmal, appalling thing that's happened there. Quite rightly, no no club is should be left unturned with this one. We've said it all along. There needs to be an open and fair and independent investigation into all yep. clubs affected. Rangers, yes, have admitted there was a couple of people involved in Rangers that were up to no good in, in terms of that, and we dealt with them promptly and correctly, regardless of what anybody of the other persuasion is listening that want to think Rangers dealt with this correctly. Celtic continue and with their non-apology apology just before this Channel 4 News thing broke, they went to court to try and stop it coming out entirely uh, from what we're led to believe, but they issued a non-apology apology just before that last before it aired last night as well and apologised but not directly They've said they've admitted now that there was contracts between the the boys' club and Celtic, but they still haven't outright admitted that they were one in the same thing, which is going to get found out very shortly. And I think Celtic have had to change tax lately on this one because this is now national. This is not just getting covered up and held back by their friends in the Scottish media. This is getting national coverage now. And with there being clear links now, to trafficking down south it's taken a even more worrying turn and it's something that they cannot hide from this is why we've asked for a open investigation for this now for every club not just celtic hopefully the survivors get the justice they deserve that's all i'd really want to see on that one because it's something that it's obviously an open investigation we don't want to prejudice anything that, that, that might come forward and Bear in mind, I include Rangers in this one as well, and I include every club. If there's any wrongdoing that's been proven to be covered up or proven that it's happened, the appropriate sanctions and the appropriate punishments need to be yeah. levelled out. Yep, and with a shadow of a doubt, yep. And the, the one thing that Celtic fans on online are trying to deflect once again, they're trying to say, well, the, the Celtic boys club and Celtic, a football club are two separate things they're two separate company numbers they really need to go and look how companies work i'll liken it to rangers and rangers retail two separate companies but it's an umbrella of rangers the, the overall company derek i have still to see the report we have been talking about this for years and years and years and years it seems to have been sort of common knowledge that all of this was supposed to be going on. I can certainly remember hearing rumblings of it a long, long time ago before it all came out. If, you know, and again, we need to watch what we're saying because there is, you know, there's still a lot of legal proceedings here. I can't comment on what I've not seen already. Uh, the thing that's annoying me, Derek, the most thing about it is when this gets highlighted in any way, shape or form, the first thing that gets thrown in your face is the point scoring thing. Not about, oh my God, we need to get something done about this or, oh, oh my God, there needs to be an investigation or, oh my God, you know, that's shocking. There needs to be an apology made. It is straight away, it's the, you're just point scoring. That, regardless if people are point scoring or not, Derek, this needs to be raised constantly it needs to, the, the, there needs to be something done about it there's, there's as you say a lot of questions that need to be asked and I just find it incredible that there are so many people out there and I'm including fans of certain teams who still will not admit that you know it's getting questioned that these things have happened and the first thing that gets thrown in your face is the fact that you're just point scoring rather than facing up to it and demanding answers because I'll be honest with you, Derek, if this had happened at my club, I would have been saying as well, we want to know exactly what's going on here and what has happened and who knew about it and what steps were taken. But I honestly have not heard any fans of that club come out and say anything like that at all. It's just straight on the defensive, use a point score and end off. And it shouldn't be like that at all, Derek. You should be wanting to know exactly what happened, even if it paints your club in a really bad light. 
uh, you, you really should and it just as, uh, astonishes me that that's you know not the attitude that's been taken or this it's incredible do you know what even if it is point scoring then good because it keeps it in the public light it keeps it in the domain of questions that need to be asked so Point score all you want, as far as I'm concerned, because it's gone on too long now, and, and as you said, something needs done about it, regardless of who it is. These people, they don't deserve to live. In my opinion, it's the worst crime that you could possibly commit. Yeah. It's the worst crime that you could possibly commit. Anybody that can defend it in any way are completely sick in the head. It's the worst thing. Nobody, there, there, there can't be any excuses for it whatsoever. And I think the fact that you know, allegedly, you know, all these things are coming out that it happened time and time again and was allowed to keep happening as well is even worse. It's it's incredible. And it needs to be out in the open. Everybody needs to know exactly what's happened. You, you know what has happened. And the people who allowed this all to happen, the people that covered it up as well, are just as bad as the people that have done it. So... That's that's all I'm going to say on it just now. I'm going to wait to see what the, the sort of official word does. I'm going to watch back the programme just to sort of make my own mind up about it. I know what you've told me about what happened in it, Derek. Uh, but if it is now on national news, uh, it'll be interesting to see if any of the rest of them will pick it up now or not. Yeah. So, a wee bit more uh, tasteful things here is Kenny Miller has been appointed director of the Australian side Newcastle Jets. So, yeah. I'm interested to see where he where he wants to try and become a player technical director. Isn't yes, it? exactly. <laughs> yep. Yep. Um, the last piece of football news here I've got is uh, Nacho Novo is leaving NN10 Bar uh, to his business partner, and the bar will be rebranded, and he's going to be focusing on football and getting into coaching. So, oh, good right. luck to to Nacho yep. there. Definitely. Yep. So, monster crocodile bites Hunter's penis after he mistook <laughs> it for a log. A log. A log. <laughs> Well, I don't know. That well, I, an Australian man was wading through a shallow water when he stepped on a log seconds later. His groin was in the jaws of a saltwater crocodile. <laughs> oh, right. That, the way that was written there made out as if the crocodile thought Aye. his penis was a log. Exactly. That's what I thought, yeah. Aye. On Saturday, October 26, around 12.30pm, Elston Lamy Lamy was hunting near <laughs> Minjalang... <laughs> Minja- <laughs> Nelson Lamy Lamy at Minjalang. Yes. <laughs> on Croker Island when he faced off against the reptile. After stepping on what he believed to be a submerged log, the 42-year-old soon realised the severity of his error. Oh dear. Uh, after stepping on the crocodile, it initially stayed still, leaving Lamy Lamy, Lamy, Lamy like a statue <laughs> figuring out what to do next. Then 15 seconds later, the 4.5 metre long angry reptile viciously flipped, launching his teeth into his right leg. In a bid to free himself from the croc's grip, he booted it with his other leg. Unfortunately, <laughs> all he did was annoy it. The reptile attacked again, this time biting, biting oh. on the groin. Oh dear. He, Poor con- lammy, lammy. <laughs> he continued to repeatedly punch the wild beast, trying to, with all his might, to get it off. <laughs> to get it off. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> to get it off. After his barking dogs and shouting relative distracted the croc, the 42 year old made, made great his escape. Well done, lammy, lammy. And f- did, his, did his groin ma- make an escape? It doesn't say. It doesn't say. Here's hoping Lammy Lammy made it away in one piece. Lammy Lammy told ABC Darwin, When he come up, he flipped like me. He looked me in the eye. I don't know what accent that is. I'll admit I've done a fucked that accent up there. Derek, you're making it as if your accents are usually spot on. That's because they are. Crikey, what a crocodile. <laughs> I hit him three times in the nose. He sounded like him. Um, he sounded like fucking Frank Butcher. <laughs> Janine, I love you, fat pack. So's earrings. <laughs> Ricky. <Ricky. laughs> oh, I think we'll leave it there, Derek. <laughs> yeah, on, on that note. <laughs> oh, dear.
So before we wrap up, just want to do, we've had a quick uh, request for a shout out. We've got to give a shout out to This Is Ibrox, which his Twitter handle is at This Is Ibrox, funnily enough. He's got a new blog that he's, he's making and he does some great stuff on there. We had a couple of uh, messages back and forward there. Um, some good stuff on his blog there. So it's if on. you go to his Twitter handle, follow him and like his blog as well. So as ever, that wraps up this podcast. Dave and I will be back at some point, hopefully before I go on holiday. Um, well, maybe depending on coronavirus exactly, on, yeah. on the 18th. So we'll hopefully we'll be back after maybe the Ross County game, if not the after the first leg of the Europa League. Yeah. Um, all that's left for me to say is if you want to check us out, you can go to our website, which is iReadyPodcast.wordpress.com and there you can find all the stuff there. Excellent. Yes, so... Mixed bag tonight, but certainly riding on a high for you know the fact that we're, we're through to the last 16 in the Europa League. We need to win against Hearts now and keep continuing on in the league. Hopefully Celtic's loss tonight will be the start of their downfall. We just need to wait and see what happens. Yeah, like we've said, Derek, I think we just need to worry about us rather than anything else and uh, hope that it goes our way. But certainly in Europe, absolutely fantastic. We can't ask for any more. Absolutely delighted and you know, let's go on and uh, hopefully get a good result against Hearts on Saturday. Absolutely. So, thanks for listening and goodbye. Take care, folks. Goodbye. And the stadium erupts in red, white and blue. You've never seen anything like it. Let's go.